In this lesson, we are going to review how to add and subtract numbers containing decimals. With the first example, we have 32 plus 4 and 5 tenths. Now, notice 32 is a whole number. It does not have a decimal or anything after that decimal for that matter. But we may rewrite 32 holes with a decimal as 32.0. A decimal point is written just to separate whole numbers from fractions. So for the second number, we have 4 and 5 tenths, and we're going to write that right below 32. So we write the number 4 right underneath the number 32 because we only add whole numbers to whole numbers, and we have to make sure when we add and subtract decimals that our decimal is lined up perfectly. And we write 5 tenths after this decimal. So this decimal in 4 and 5 tenths separates four holes from 5 tenths. The first place value after the decimal is the tenths place. After you line up your decimals properly, we add those values together, and you may start by taking that decimal and dropping it straight down. Adding up all the digits in the tenths column, we get 5 tenths. Adding up all the digits in the ones place, we get 6, and we only have 3 tenths here, and that's 3. So our answer is 36 and 5 tenths. Now with the second example, we have three values that we're adding together. The first value is 0 and 34 hundredths. The second value is 2 holes and 34 hundredths. And the last value is 8. And we have to write that in the ones column. And we may add a decimal right after the number 8 and add zeros to hold these place values for us. And we add these values together. And we may start by dropping our decimal straight down. In the hundredths column, we have a total of eight hundredths. In the tenths column, we have a total of six tenths. And in the ones column, we have a total of 10. So all three of these values added together yields a sum of 10 and 68 hundredths. Now let's try some subtraction. We have 45 and 4 tenths. And from that, we are going to subtract 20 and 25 hundredths. And just like with addition, you have to make sure that you line up your decimal point and drop that straight down. And if you have any blank place values, Simply hold that place by writing a zero. Next, we have to subtract five from zero, but we cannot subtract five from nothing, so we must turn that zero into a 10 by borrowing one whole from the tenths place. So this four is going to turn into a three. Now we may do 10 minus five, which is five, and three take away two is one. Five take away zero is five, and in this column, we have a difference of two. So the difference of the two given numbers is 25 and 15 hundredths. And one last example, we have 12, and right away I'm going to write 12.00, because I notice with the second number, 6 and 56 hundredths, we have two place values after our decimal. And we have to subtract 6 and 56 hundredths from 12. So first, I'm going to drop the decimal straight down. And then I'm going to perform any necessary borrowing up at the top. We cannot take 6 away from 0, so we must turn that 0 into a 10. But we have nothing right next door to borrow from, so we have to turn that 0 also into a 10. Then we can borrow 1 from that 10 and turn it into a 9. But when we change that 0 into a 10, we had to borrow 1 from this 2. So we have one remaining. But notice we cannot subtract six from one, so now this one we have left must turn into an 11. So we borrow one from this one, and that turns into a zero. Okay, now we can take six away from 10, and that leaves us with a difference of four. In this column, we have nine take away five. That's a difference of four as well. And in this column, we have 11 take away six, and that leaves us with five. 
So 12 take away 6 and 56 hundredths is equal to 5 and 44 hundredths. And just to make sure we have the right answer with our subtraction problem, it is a good idea to perform the inverse operation. That simply means do the reverse of what you did. Because we subtracted, we are going to add to check our answer. So let's take 5 and 44 hundredths and add that to 6 and 56 hundredths to see if we get what we started with, which is 12. So once again, we drop our decimal straight down, and then we proceed to add the hundreds column. And in this column, we get a sum of 10. Carry the 1. This column, we also get a sum of 10. And in this column, we get a sum of 12. So by doing the inverse operation, we can see that we did in fact perform our subtraction correctly. So we could say that 5 and 44 hundredths is the correct answer.